Do you guys remember when you were a kid and back in 1998 you kind of were hearing about Pokemon here and there and then come Christmas morning I think I got my first copy of Pokemon Red for my aunt and I wasn't too sure because I, I don't think I watched the show um, but it was pretty fun to play. I think the best part when you first turn on that game though is when you see Nidorino and Gengar fighting each other so I mean it's a pretty awesome way to open up you know with a real Pokemon battle but my favorite was when I think I started watching the show afterwards and I saw the first episode of Pokemon and to see that in the cartoon and then transition over to them like actually battling in like real time was probably like one of the best things that I could ever see as a kid and I could never get over that and, and to this day I still think it's one of the coolest openings that you ever see in Pokemon. So of course 151 is coming out tomorrow, uh, September 22nd and obviously there's this huge hype around it okay i mean it's been out since the summer in japan and those of us who are lucky to grab it obviously grabbed a couple boxes to open for themselves and it's been really fun opening those things especially with the introduction of the master balls and the like the pokeball reverses and just seeing like for the first time all original 151 being in one set now obviously like in the past between like base set and fossil and all of those they were all split up I think you know just to see if like every, anybody wanted to play the game if it was going to catch traction here in the US but you know obviously as time went on more and more Pokemon were introduced and you know they had to like pick and choose who was going to be in each set so I think this is a great way for older generations to relive their childhood by having all 151 in one set. But the question is, will this set crash and burn in a few months time? So like celebrations, like Pokemon Go, since this is a special set, there's no booster boxes. The product is limited to like elite trainer boxes, special like collections like a binder collection or the poster collections that are coming out Friday. And then the new introduction is the booster bundles, which were brought I think in the Scarlet and Violet era but since there are no booster boxes it's still gonna kind of cost a little bit um, just to try to collect and I'm not sure if you're gonna like go and get every single product to um, either for your personal collection keep in storage for a long time you're gonna be spending more than you really need to in order to complete this set so when celebrations first came out I feel like the product was either there or it wasn't I know that sounds kind of weird but like think about it so the ultra premium collection you could not find that thing i still i never found it to this day and the stores that had it were like had one or two in their possession and that was it so this was what 2021 when celebrations came out and i feel like pokemon is still feeling the effects of the pandemic and they were trying to um maybe catch up with demand but there definitely wasn't enough printed for celebration especially for the upc as for the Elite Trainer boxes and like the Pikachu V Union and stuff like that, they were easier to find. And to this day, I still kind of find the, the um, Lance's Charizard or Dark Sylveon boxes in Walmart. Um, so that's kind of weird. I mean, the good news is about Celebrations is the product, I think, is finally starting to go up. If you look on TCG Player, they're going for around $35 for the Lance's Charizard and Dark Sylveon boxes. Um, the UPC, which is absolutely wild, is going for $400, and if you guys forgot, the MSRP for that was $120 when it came out, so that's quite the markup. Even the Elite Trainer boxes, they're going for $85, those are just the regular ones, and the Pokemon Center Elite Trainer boxes are going for $120, and those retailed for $65, so that's still double of what you're getting or what you paid for if you were able to grab them back then. But what I'd like to think about this is that Celebrations was kind of the last set to come out before Pokemon started over printing product. Now it's not necessarily a bad thing. If you're a person who's trying to buy all the product and then resell it, it is because there's gonna be enough available to the public where you're not gonna be getting premium prices. You're gonna be maybe even losing money. So I would not suggest doing that. Um, and as for a collector, it's great because everything's gonna be cheap, right? Um, besides like those one or two chase cards from sets, everything's relatively cheap, easy to find, and there's not gonna be a problem. But I also think that Pokemon learned their lesson because if you look at the Charizard UPC, 
When that was first announced, and I did this, I remember pre-ordering one for about $250, which is crazy to think about because now you can go on eBay or anybody and they'll sell them between like $90 to $100. That's $30 to $20 off of MSRP because their MSRP is $120, which is, you know, typical price. But because there's so many of them, there's no point. Like people can't get rid of them. But when you look at 151, things have definitely changed. I remember looking at the pre-orders for the Ultra Premium Collection. Um, pretty easy to find on like Best Buy and Target and all of those sites. Um, they were selling them for 120. I've seen people from game stores sell them for $90 already. Like they're already $30 below MSRP, which is pretty wild to think especially because of how popular the set is going to be, especially for everybody who didn't grab any Japanese booster boxes. But that brings me to my point is because Pokemon is start, starting to now overprint everything and make sure everybody gets it, this product is going to be widely available. And I don't think it's going to be as valuable as some people think. Maybe in like a few years when they stop printing it, it might be, but I... Now, this is all speculation. Don't bite my head off if you're like, no, you're wrong. It's going to be the most popular set. Everyone's going to fucking buy it. And everyone's going to, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying it's going to take at least, I'm, I'm just going to say at least 10 years before this product really gets a surge in prices. That's just how I see it. Um, nothing really right now is holding a lot of value. Scarlet and Violet has been pretty weak in terms of collecting, I feel like. 151 does have the advantage of being the original Pokemon. Who knows? I, I don't know, but that's just how I see it. Obviously, there's a couple things different between the Japanese set and the English set. The first being that there are no more Master Balls or Pokeballs in the reverse lot. They're just the regular reverse that we're seeing in Scarlet and Violet, and I think that's probably the biggest mistake that they did. You know, when you open up that Japanese booster box, you always were wondering, oh, what Master Ball am I going to get? I mean, every other reverse was just a Pokeball, so, I mean, but it's still a cool design. I think it's better than the reverses we're seeing now. But the Master Ball was also, like, one thing. You also had this, you had the Secret Art Rare to look forward to. You had maybe a God Pack, and then the Master Ball. And you really wanted that Master Ball to be, like, a really cool Pokemon. You know, I know in the first box that I opened, it was the Flareon. Second was Rattatun, third was Kingler. Whatever. Not good. But the Flareon was really awesome. Pikachu is going up for like $300 over in Japan, which is wild. But that's what I mean. It all came down to sheer luck and what you could pull. But because that's gone, that's one less thing to worry about. And really, really it all comes down to the chase cards. My second issue with the English release is in the Ultra Premium Collection, you get the Full Art Mew, the Art Rare Mewtwo, and you get the alternate art Mew in one box. I don't know why they did that. I feel like what they should have done is had maybe like different artwork that they did for like the Charizard UPC and maybe put it in there and then keep those three as like chase cards in 151. But now you're taking away three big cards from 151 and it's only going to be a matter of time before people get those cards and just stop collecting altogether and because there's going to be so many upcs available these cards aren't going to hold huge value i still think the mew all art is going to be maybe maybe after time like 20 25 dollars but i mean but look at the charizard upc in english those cards are like 10 dollars at most for 10 to 15 dollars i think at most sure they're cool looking cards but again not a lot of value because they're all reprinted the shit in the upc which brings me to my next point is since there is less to chase, it's going to be cheaper to just to buy singles, but also there's going to be a lot more product on the shelf. I th really do think that there's going to be a lot more product of 151 on the shelf than there is compared to, say, Celebrations. Again, overprinting, making super rare cards readily available to the public. Nobody's going to want to spend $120 or, say, even $90 for an ultra premium collection just for those three cards where I'm telling you they're going to be a lot cheaper just to buy singles. But don't get me wrong, like, God knows if I'd ever pull those three cards because you know my luck on this channel. I really don't pull a lot. My luckiest pull so far has been that Charizard SAR that we got from the Japanese uh, 151 in my last stream. Really not a bad looking card in person. Still my least favorite out of the original starters. 
but I never would have pulled the Mew All Art. That just never would have happened. Maybe the Mewtwo. Mewtwo was easier because that's an art rare, but Mew All Art? No, I definitely would have been buying that at some point on the internet. So there are a couple good things that I can see 151 bringing um, over here. So they're finally, I think for the first time in English history, they're bringing God Packs to to the US. I've seen a couple videos where it's it's not a full god pack. So like in Japan it was uh, two sets of starter Pokemon whereas here in the English version of 151 there's just gonna be one set of the starters which is still pretty cool. I'm surprised that Pokemon Company is even throwing that in there because to even give us something to look forward to is kind of fucking surprising in my eyes that'll be fun to look forward to i think that might keep pack prices up a little bit with the potential of god packs actually showing up can't imagine me pulling any but still a fun idea to have and then also just because the art rares in this set are some of the best art that i've ever seen on pokemon cards i mean the squirtle line is my favorite out of all three of the starters bulbasaur is a close second um charmander sucks I just I don't like how far they are away from the card. I, I I want the Pokemon to try to take up the card as much as they can. Like the Ice Q, the Ice Q sucks from Obsidian mm. Flames. Anyway, but all of the art rares, Dragonair is such a solid art rare in this set. Like, if I ever pulled that, I would love to get that graded. I I, I don't care what you say. It's just a, such a majestic looking card. So I feel like they really didn't hold back on the art in this set and I think for good reason because without these Pokemon there would be nothing. I feel like if you were the lucky ones who was able to open up a Japanese booster box this set isn't going to feel as special because it's something that we've already pulled. There's no like I said before there's no Master Ball to look forward to in this um, so it's gonna I feel like it's gonna fall flat a little bit and obviously when it comes to Japanese prices and quality control in terms of selling, prices are always going to be higher. In terms of quality control, quality is always better on the Japanese cards. But of course, you know, I'm still going to try to collect every single card. I'll probably do a master set because you know what they say, gotta catch them all. <laughs> and one more thing, I'm sure you guys heard Card Party is going to be in Orlando this year, which is really nice because now I don't have to travel as far. Um, it should be just a one flight thing, but, you know, let me know if you guys are going. Hopefully I can... See you guys there and take some pictures, do whatever. Should be a fun time. I had a lot of fun last year, so, and it should be better. So let me know if you guys are going. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let me know down below if you guys are going to be pulling all the good hits. If you're going to be getting all the products. And hope to catch you guys on the next one. See ya.